creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much for joining me today for Creative Living. We're going to learn how to make Zen tangles and also show how to create your own background paper to use for craft projects and much more. Do you know what a Zen tangle is? One of my next guests is Deborah Pace, and she's an artist and designer. Deborah's going to explain what a Zen tangle is, tell us how it got started, and what supplies are needed. She has several samples to show some designs that will help you get started doing this. Deborah will also talk about what surfaces you can use to create your Zen tangle designs on. Her business is Art Bark Creations in Rancho Cucamonga, California. My first guest today is Teresa Cifali, and she's a mixed media artist, and she's going to show how to create your own background paper. Teresa said she started doing this in order to coordinate with cards, scrapbooking, and other paper crafts. She's going to demonstrate two different techniques for doing this. Her business is The Altered Canvas, and she lives in Vahalia, New York. Teresa, this looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, and, and you both, both, both of us said almost at the same time, this one's my favorite. <laughs> so we're going to do some things with stenciling, and uh, you're going to show us how to make our own background paper, because I do scrapbooking, and I'm always thumbing through it, and I'll think, oh, nothing really fits what I want. Uh, you should see my paper stash. I have, I had to move Tons. out of my house just for the paper. <laughs> um, so, um, oh yeah. You just decided to start making your own. It, sometimes it's really necessary because you just want to use a certain color and sometimes it's just easier to match up your inks than it is to, you know, find the right shade and it's just... Published ones. Oh, yeah. This is the first example we're going to show making our own circle pattern background. It's like a nice polka dot. Uh-huh. And this is just a, a polka dot stencil, really mm -hmm. simply. Yeah. We're just going to take a piece of paper. You just now, use kind of a light pink. I use the light could, color. You, uh -huh. If you're going to use dark, dark paper, this isn't really going to work. But oh, light, uh -huh. light color hues. And then all you're going to do is, I'm the queen of stipple brushes. I love stipple brushes. They're my favorite tool. Oh, really? And one thing with stipple any. brushes is when you go from the ink, uh -huh. you don't want to go directly to your paper. Because oh. you can add color if it's not dark enough, but you can't but take you can't it away. you can't take it away. That's So right. you're just going to kind of work it off. And then all you're going to do is do this little brushing pattern. Uh-huh. And don't worry if you don't get the whole entire circle. That's what makes it handmade and it makes it look fun. Oh. And you're just going to keep doing that entire. And what kind of are these? These are just inks? dye inks. They're dye just inks. regular dye inks. Uh -huh. You can use permanents for it. Makes it a little harder to clean off your stencil. But oh, yeah. um, per, um, dye inks are fine. Mm -hmm. You can use chalk inks. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to. that just. Yep, and that's, that's the perfect. effect you get. Perfect. You're going to get rid of this, actually. Okay. And that's oh. what it should look like when it's done. Mm hmm and then, so the next step that you want to do is you're going to switch stipple brush colors. I'm going to get rid of my green, take oh. my purple. See, I thought you'd probably do a, a green and a purple and a green and blue. That would take, are you insane? That would take all day. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> that would, no, no, we're just going to go overlap back them. Over. Just uh -huh. move your stencil. We want, we want quick and easy. I like this. Quick and easy is, is, is the key. And then same uh -huh. thing, you just do your, just kind of brush. Um, if you want something that looks like more, has more texture, you can just stipple like that, mm -hmm. back and forth. I'm just doing a little oh. brush technique, and then it will look like that. Voila. Oh, wow. And then the last this is step, so pretty. And see how fast it is? Yeah. And then the last thing you can do is just find a new spot. Oh, so we're going to use a third color. We're going to use a third color. You can use as many as you want. Yeah. You can add a fourth one in there if you like. Same difference. You're going to get all that beautiful mm. blue going in there, mm -hmm. and then, oh, that and is that's so what pretty, it looks like. and, and I've seen some nice that, on the pink, right? Well, it does. I like it on the pink, and that is similar to how we, you, created this background. <laughs> so it's all in the colors, all in the wrist, as they Absolutely. say. Absolutely. I, I okay. perfectly well expect to, um, to see what you've done. Okay, I, I will make that. my own. And then own? this one is, this is the stencil, This the, the part that's white. This is what we're going to be looking at. But Teresa's going to also show us how to use the, I guess you'd call it the reverse part of the stencil, the part well, that... What's what's neat about this is we all have these die cut machines. Actually, uh -huh. if you could pick that back up, okay. I'll show you really quick. Um, I have a Sizzix uh -huh. big quilt die cut machine. I love it, and I can run my big giant stencils oh, through uh -huh. there. And I actually originally said I really want to use 
this just to get this kind of a background. So right, I like same it. thing, stipple brushes mm -hmm. and dye ink, and I got that pattern back there. And then I was looking at this, and I'm like, That's that what looks you like punched a flower. It out of. Uh -huh. and, you know, I did it on a tag board so that I can save it. It'll last me a little while. Good idea. But you could do it on chipboard, too. That would work. And all oh. I did was using same technique, stipple brush. That you just showed us. That uh -huh. you just showed us. And this has, I used chalk inks, nice bright chalk inks. And I just kind of moved it out uh -huh. and got that kind of rainbow florally effect. Or we effect. could o overlap it a little bit like you did on the circles. Mm -hmm. How and, pretty. And it's great because you're repurposing. It's always good so to clever. use things for more than one. Uh -huh. That's what I always say. Oh yeah, might as well. So and then on that layout, not only is the background a handmade background, but this looks like printed paper that you you know, could have bought it at the store, but uh -huh. this uses a lot of elements. I actually made that. Oh, you made this too? Yeah, okay. using, um, again, dye inks, stipple brushes, and rubber stamps. Okay, show us how we do so, that. So, I absolutely will. And you, I'm gonna grab my stipple brushes again, and my supplies over here. And we're just gonna, you're gonna start with a plain. White, plain white. Plain uh -huh. white paper. And you're gonna take different size stamps. That's the These most are important. These the neatest stencils is you really want like stamps. Uh -huh. Different contrasts and stuff like that and collage -y. I want to do a collage type feel, so this is what I chose. Now when you're stamping the background, you want to, very important, you want to make sure you use permanent ink. Okay, use permanent ink And you want to use permanent ink because mm -hmm. once you start layering color over this, like uh -huh. we did here, uh -huh. oh, it it's would going smear, to smear. Uh -huh. So we're gonna use, um, Basically, you want to start with your largest stamps, okay, and just stamp them kind of haphazardly, no particular, you know, just at random, oh, until and it can you go get off the page. And some go off the page, and uh -huh. it's really important. This is actually this stamp over here, just off the page. <laughs> okay. And then what you're going to do is, I like to ink my stamps up upside down so I can see what I'm doing. Uh huh. Because there's nothing more frustrating than doing it this way, and then oh, you, you didn't cover the whole stamp. It. So you're just going to oh. ink that up. And then you're just going to start stamping whatever. I'm not, this one's partly off the page. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to, all over the okay. place, use my different stamps. Uh -huh. Sorry about that. I just bumped right into you. And until and I get my smaller stamps in here. Now, I have all this white space in here, and uh -huh. I just wanted to do something fun and change it up a little bit. And it's my paper, so I'm the only one that really needs to like it, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> So I'm just going to kind of go in here, and I'm not worrying about overlapping. Just and I'm just putting stamp. it in some of that. Yeah, just oh. going to stamp, re-ink, re re-stamp, and you're going to just keep doing that in the really large white areas, uh -huh. like we did here, until mm -hmm. I can see that. That looks like this. Oh. Okay, now evidently we've added color to this. I can ah, see that. Before <laughs> we even added color, see all this white space? Uh -huh. It's very stark. This is a textured stamp. It's not of any kind of image. It just adds a really neat textural oh. effect. And I've never this heard goes, of that. yeah, it just kind of like gives it a little random. Sort of a smudge, but. Yeah, um. I mean, they're, they're all different kinds. I mean, you can take huh. um, wax paper and crinkle it up and dip it in there and get the oh, same kind of textured okay. background effect. Okay. So just to kind of get, now we've add, now is the time, time when we add the, the color. color. Okay. And that's, that's the fun part. Uh -huh. So we're just gonna open these up and um, you always want to work from your lightest to your darkest. Right. Very important. We'll move some of these things out of the way. And I'm just going to show a really quick demonstration. Again, favorite stipple brushes. Make sure mm -hmm. I wasn't paying attention where I put what color. Oh. Uh -huh. And again, you always want to make sure you take some of the color off. Well, don't go directly to the project. Right. And I always it. start from the edge and work my way out because it kind of gives it that um, vintage -y, warm effect because usually the edges start to darken and fray before. Uh -huh, to age. <laughs> exactly. So work it on the so you're edge. Just working mm -hmm. on your edge and you just kind of do that. And do these brushes hold up well? These I mean, are that years. You're putting a, oh, these are, are they? years I've been using these. These oh, are okay. old brushes, let me tell you. They take a beating because I'm they not gentle. They do look like you're really brushing hard on there and I wondered how they'd hold up. Oh, they uh -huh. hold up really well. They do. Um, I, I like using them, and then I'm going to go to my next darkest color. And I got to tell you, Tim Holtz's distress inks are my favorite on the whole planet. Uh -huh. and I'm just going to go in here and maybe like add, you know, make it a little just darker a little in bit spots. Darker. In spot, uh huh. Just in spots, and then I like to kind of antique my edges a little bit, and just kind of hit the edges like this. And you're just going to do that all over your paper, and you can you you could use a full. 12 by 12 sheet mm -hmm. until you get this. That is so pretty. 
And now I can see, looking at this one, I couldn't tell what all you really did to it, but now you can see it. So that is so nice. Again, the finished one. Add the photographs or whatever other decor you want on it. Makes a beautiful background. And let's quickly show about using the heart stamps. Oh, I think that's is, really easy really and fun pretty. Too. And very, very simple. Uh -huh. You just need some acrylic paint, some foam stamps, and this is actually a, a monochromatic layout, but you could certainly do this with other colors. Mm -hmm. You've got pink on pink here. And what you want to do, the only thing that's really important about this, besides you want to get a nice coating of uh -huh. paint on your stamp. And when you're stamping, it's really boring if you just stamp everything in a row like this. So oh, you really want to make sure random, random of, patterns, some, so you, some go off the page. Uh -huh. And nobody will ever guess that you, know, you made it yourself. They're no. going to ask you where you found it. Really? So. In fact, I, I swear I, can, I have seen some of these in the store, but not quite. <laughs> <laughs> how nice. Thank you so much for showing us how to make our own papers. Thanks for having me, Cheryl. Deborah, thank you so much for being here. When you sent me your book and the email talking about Zen doodling and Zen tangling and all that, which I'd never heard of, I thought after I read about it, I thought I've done this for years. I simply can't talk on the phone or sometimes in workshops or conferences if I kind of am bored. I like to sit there and draw. I'm more into the geometric designs. That's what I like to do. But how did you get started? I got started uh, by accident. I was on the internet one day, and you know how those links will lead you mm -hmm. to another, to another, to another. And one of the Zentangle images popped up, and I got curious at what this is. Mm -hmm. So I went online. There's a website called Zentangle.com, and you can go on there, and they have uh, images, and they also have list of teachers, certified Zentangle teachers. And you are a certified teacher. Yes, uh -huh. I am. And they can find someone in their area if they would like to learn, to learn how to do Zentangle. And it gives a little bit more information, goes in depth, and how they got started mm -hmm. uh, with Zentangling. Well, it's interesting because I learned a whole new vocabulary. Yes. <laughs> the more I read about it, I learned lots of new words. And, and on the internet, too, uh, if you go to, the, to their website, there's even a basic book for people who maybe just want to get started from the very beginning. Correct. If there's no one in their area or they would prefer to learn on their own, they can take uh, this basic book mm -hmm. and it will show them how to get started from the beginning from A to Z, uh, the tiles, the strings, what to use, the pens, the pencils. What to do with them. Um, yes, uh -huh. what to do with them. And it gives them a basic start uh -huh. on how to disentangle. Then there's the little, this is called Alpha Tangle. Correct. And I like this because I do like to work with alphabets. So this right. will be fun. Right. I just opened it and to the it P. And it not all, uh, only gives you the letter, but it gives you the tangle patterns that start with that uh -huh. letter. And wow. see, yes. Uh -huh. uh, like, the, for instance, this is called Crescent Moon. So they all have their own, own individual names. names. Of course. Yes. Now that's true. Yes. Okay. And another thing that I found interesting, you said there's a little kit. You there's can a get. little kit. Yes. And, in and your I have one too. Yeah, I, you do. And in your kit, you will find that it has tiles, it has a pen, it has a pencil, and it also has a tortillion, or they're called sometimes blending stumps. And so that's this. That's this right here. Oh, okay. One thing it does not have is an eraser. And the reason it does not have an eraser, and we'll just get rid of get that. Get rid of that? Yeah. Oh. And the we reason don't use erasers? We do not use an eraser. It's with Zentangle, it's like life. There's no do-overs. <laughs> Only creative opportunities. So I if like you that. mess Nothing's up. Nothing's wrong. Yeah. If you uh -huh. mess up, you just go with the, the flow and just figure out what to do with it, and you uh -huh. have a whole new pattern. <laughs> oh, so, and Zentangle tiles, that was a new word I'd learned. Right. And that's what these are? These are called tiles, yes. Tiles. Right. Uh -huh. So... Would the you little, like what, to? Four by fours or something? They're three and a half by three and a three half. half. Okay. So if yeah. you want to take a pack and put it in your purse and take a, just a pen uh -huh. or a uh, pen and pencil, you're ready to go. Ready to go. You're right. sitting at a stoplight forever or waiting on a train or something. Right. This could be. But not while you're driving. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> so would you like to have a go mm -hmm. at it? Sure. Okay. All right. So. Everybody knows that when you have a blank tile, it's kind of scary. It's like, what do Where I do? do with it? Right. Uh -huh. So the first thing we do is we'll put a dot in each little corner. Okay, that's not hard. Okay. Okay, and then we'll connect the dots. And your lines don't have to be straight. If you can see, mine are kind of wonky. It doesn't okay. matter. 
And the next thing we're going to do with our pencil is draw a string. And that's just breaking this up into smaller bite-sized portion. Hmm. So we'll just make... Just anything? A, a, yeah, a Z, an N, whatever you want. And there you go. I've done one? You've done one. <laughs> okay, so Great. now we'll put our pencil aside. We'll take our pen. And this is a Micron 01 pen. Mm -hmm. Okay, and let's try this pattern oh, right this here. Oh, this was fun, yes. Okay. But let's talk about this. If somebody doesn't know what to do, tell me how these two things work. Okay. I like this. This is a deck of cards. Uh-huh. Okay, a deck of cards. And it has different patterns in here. Uh-huh. And it also, if you notice, oh, for this one, you it shows start. you how to start. Uh -huh. So let's let's have a go at it and try that. So we're going to do ripples. We're going to do ripples, correct? Okay. Okay. And then all it is is a series of small little circles, just randomly placed here and there. Doesn't matter rhyme or reason. Okay. 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 And then we'll start to make a series of circles around it, just like when you like throw donuts. a rock in in a pond. Uh huh. And if you see, I am going over. Oh, my line. line. It does oh. not matter. It does not matter. Your line is just a suggestion. <clears throat> so see, I've already noticed I, I was going to do the little first circle around each one. Now you started with one right. and continued. Okay, because we're doing repetitive patterns, so you complete that pattern. Oh, then you do I got the, too far ahead. You got too okay. far ahead, <laughs> right. Okay, so if I were doing it like that, I right. would stop because that line, if that's what I wanted to right. do. You don't... So you can stay within the line, you can go out of the line. It's what you want to do. This is your oh, tangle. And you just, and you see mm -hmm. how quickly that goes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so that's it. And that's then, it? Right, and then uh -huh. if you go, okay, now what do I want to do? There's, besides the deck of cards. Oh, this is fun. Yes. Uh -huh. In a kit, there's a kit, a Zentangle kit. It's a box set that comes with this. Uh -huh. And this is fun because if, you, now, what do I what do What do I there? do in this part? Right. Uh -huh. All right I'll throw the dice, and so we'll go with 12. Number so we'll 12. look for 12. And when we find 12, that's Whoops. the Zentangle that we'll do next. 12, right here. Yeah, and you uh -huh. don't even have to think, okay, what do uh -huh. I do next? Just follow the die. Oh, Okay, and, that's all you, and you know the fact that we all draw differently, bigger, smaller, very intense, yes. every design's different. Right, you can have 20 people in a room, uh -huh. teach 20 people the exact same design, and all 20 will come out different. Wow. Well, this, I know what I'm going to be doing <laughs> when I should be working. <laughs> okay, that, that's kind of fun. This would be a fun Zendang, Zentangle party, wouldn't it? Yes, <laughs> you can do that. You can have your group of people over. And oh, now how did this work? Okay. Show how that so if I'm going blender. to do a shading, let's say I want to do shading along here. Okay, I take my, my, my blending stump, mm -hmm. add a little pencil line, and it gives smooth oh. out the oh, lines, wow. uh -huh. and you get a little bit of shading. I Just see. Just as simple as that. Mm -hmm. And it enhances your it's, zentangle. Uh -huh, and it's not as abrupt. Right, uh -huh. right. And now, what about coloring? Can I like to add colors, use okay. different markers and things. Right. So we could do that as you well. You can do, and you don't have to use the black pen. We have a brown pen and uh -huh. a blue pen. So I'm going to use the blue pen. Oh, and you can go on top of other Right, designs. right. And then uh -huh. instead of using, it's uh, like a matte pen. Or the it, this is a chalk, uh, a chalk pen, chalk or a pastel okay. pen. So we'll do the same thing, and then we'll just blend the color in, and you can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's just as simple as mm. that. And and I know you can do this on watercolor paper. So would you ever add water to one of your designs? Right, right. You can add water to your designs. Mm -hmm. I don't have a sample here, but yes, you can do the same uh -huh. thing. Instead of using pencil, you just take out your, your little paints, 
paint it up and then use the water to blend it and you can do the exact same thing. Oh, how fun. Well, and I asked you uh, when we were talking before, what do you do with these little designs? And this was so interesting. This is your design. That is my design. Okay. And so it's people, okay, you've done 20, 30, 40 uh -huh. tiles. Now what do, what do I you do? do? Uh -huh. Right. So this is my design that I did. I have a friend that works digitally Ooh, and you can take your artwork and just do a number of things uh -huh. with it like this card or you know party favors or whatever it is that you oh, want to do. You can just make a whole party on you can. Zentangle Designs, right. can't you? Here is a set that I've done that shows you the different designs that you can do in the white, the tan, the black, and also in mm -hmm. fabric. Oh, any cotton or cotton, what? Does it matter? It does not matter. Cotton, polyester, silk, whatever it is that uh -huh. you want to use it in. And you use the same pens? You can, uh, that one, yes, you use the same pens. You would use a black jelly roll. I have the white here. And if I had black fabric, I would just draw oh, it in black. In, in white? I mean in the, white, uh -huh. correct, correct. I see. Right. Well, uh -huh. So okay, and this these this and is then just these another. are uh, zandalas. Zandala is a hybrid of a mandala circle, and those are always circles. They're right? always circles, yes, and a zentangle art, and they can be done in a square. They also have um, oh. pre-printed. Either oh, that. Well, that th might be handy yeah, if you're these, just getting started. Right, and, uh -huh. and it already has the line, so you don't have uh -huh. to think, or you can do your own, and they can be made either with a compass. A CD Just disc. Draw around a CD. A coaster. You could use a coffee filter. It's oh, as simple draw as on that. This? Yes, you can draw on that. And let me give you a colored pencil to go ahead. Oh, and, and is pencil better on thin things like this? Uh, it, it, I would use a pencil. If you want to use a pen, I would back it with something to make sure that it doesn't leak through these. This the is micro one of my favorite designs. And I think there is a pattern <laughs> is like <there>? that. <laughs> Nothing is original. Right. And so then you can also, if you want to get creative. Oh, the black and you white. Can, and uh -huh. what you do is you cut two pieces of paper, black and white. Mm -hmm. And you take your tape and tape them together mm -hmm. so that you come up with this. I see. Uh -huh. And so the only thing you have to remember is that when you go on the black, you use the white, and when of you course. go on the white, you <laughs> use the black. <laughs> well, I, I think that's pretty obvious. And let's look at the design you created. This is beautiful. Thank you. Wow. This is just never ending. It's and, never and you ending. said the people that founded this, tell that story about oh, Rick observing. It, uh, Rick one day was observing, Marie, uh, Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas are the creators of Zentango. Uh -huh. And Maria is as calligraphist uh -huh. and so she was drawing doing a manuscript and Rick went in to talk to her and he was unable to get her attention and when he she finally was so deep she, into thinking yes uh -huh. and so when he finally got her attention he goes you know I was trying to get your attention and you weren't responding mm -hmm. he goes tell me about it so she was telling him <laughs> how she was like in her own little world her zen mm -hmm. little world zen that's where the zen tangle right. zen doodle comes right from. and he told her you that's meditation so they talked about it and they said what can we do mm -hmm. to let other people in on our little secret and <laughs> be able to do the uh -huh. same things that we do. And that's well, this, how it got started. Well, it's really interesting. You ha you have several designs featured in this book, which yes. people can look get online. Correct. Uh, and this is uh, a book that is totally your designs. No, this is this another has one. Others too. I have another okay. one, yes. That will be all of your designs. Right. Well, I, I think it's really fun to look at them. And like I say, I've you, you noticed the one I like to do. You said, oh, that one already has a name. But uh, it, it's just fun. It's it's very relaxing. Right. And like I say, I do it all the time and didn't even know what I was doing. <laughs> Except <laughs> wasting paper is what I thought it was. No, you can now <laughs> frame it and make art. That's right. Well, Deborah, thank you so much You're for welcome. being here today. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to convert a Roman shade to make it compliant to new rules, and we'll discuss how to optimize our nutrition. One of my next guests will give a brief overview of the latest Roman shade safety standards, and then she'll show us how to convert an existing Roman shade to make it safety compliant. Keep in mind that these changes only pertain to someone who sews for others, so if you make your own shades, you don't have to make all these changes that are required by law. 
We'll also talk to a spiritual master who's going to talk about optimizing nutrition. He stresses that moderation and temperance are much more successful than obsessive compulsive diets. Both of these topics will be featured on the next Creative Living Show. If you ever have comments or suggestions or ideas for shows, you can email me at cheryl.borden at ennmu.edu. I'd also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com and in the search window, type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much. I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer you a new booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. This booklet is titled the 6900 series and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. For your copy of this new booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or on any of the other booklets that we have available online. We also would like to invite you to sign up for our free e-newsletter. Just go to kenw.org and click on the sign up now button. Thank you.